let me get rid of this area here and we get a, a clean board good so all this talk we made right now was to help us understand one power of the javascript language is to help us to understand with javascript we have this power you get that what we just did right now is just a glance up for the power of javascript but since we are discussing websites it is important for us to be able to influence our web page using javascript like we said the other time we could listen to on click to listen to users behavior and interact with the user right this is one good way which speaks straight to our website that is more important to us right now the other way too is that it is possible for us to ask javascript to change an attribute of a tag right javascript can be able to change the attribute of a tag javascript can be able to insert a new tag inside html you see the game is changing from too much mathematics and reasoning and other things to the possibility of it interacting with our web page directly and that's what is more interesting for us now <laughs> because this part we are not there yet our website doesn't have these possibilities yet but we should be able to, be, to insert a tag add an attribute even find you should be able to find a tag and be able in fact before you add a, an attribute to a tag you must find that tag find it and add a, an attribute to it right so we need to do javascript can help us find a tag and work on that tag and then send it back to the browser's engine you get that so this is one way too we can use javascript so one thing is use javascript to interact with your html code or your css code or use javascript to do mathematical reasoning and mathematic mathematical calculations for mathematics i don't know if you are getting this so two things now so we have three things you have to keep in mind the first one is to understand that the javascript engine is embedded in the browser right the second thing is to know that javascript can help you do logical thinking and mathematics so logic and math right and third thing that we know that javascript can help you interact with html welcome to your javascript class <laughs> So all this plenty talk is to make you realize this, right? So you have two ways of using JavaScript. We can see two uses of JavaScript. One, logical and mathematics thinking. Secondly, interacting with your uh, HTML and your CSS. And we saw a little bit how we can do this logical thinking and we interacted with the JavaScript engine now to test it and see if it can really do these calculations. It can reason with this if statement and what happens, can it reason and really think based on this condition I could do, I should behave this way. Can it think, yes, we find out it can do that. Now let's try to find out how it can interact really with our HTML, apart from the on click. Okay, so this will take us to using our JavaScript as an extent. No, let's make it embedded first. So using our JavaScript as an embedded uh, script. Okay, so how do we do that? So let's go back to the page. And like we said, when we want to talk to the browser, specifically to the browser, not to human beings, we go in the head, right? In the head tag. Just like we did, we did with the star tag, we use it in the head tag. So this time around, we use the script tag, not star. Remember? So we use script tag, and you can see I only tag it to auto complete. The text editor will tell you that the tag of this script is going to be JavaScript. 
right? So in between these two tags, that's where we are going to write our. Oh, since my X editor is freezing, and my computer is freezing, the man to is ready now. That is all today. So we we'll go in between the two scripts, and we can write our JavaScript there. So to prove that, let's say alert. We will use the alert function to see if JavaScript is actually recognizing this portion of the code. Hello from head. Hello from head. Right? And we add the semicolon. So the fact that we place this JavaScript code inside the head will tell the browser automatically when you load the page, execute this JavaScript here. Right? So we'll go to the browser and, pre and reload. Alright, so I get the message that says hello from head. You got the same thing? Yes. Perfect. So now it means we have a place where we can easily write JavaScript, not inline in it, but a comfortable place where we can write much more JavaScript. Peaceful. Right? So here we go. Let's get rid of the alert. It's a bit annoying here. Now, <clears throat> remember the function I used some time ago inside the browser, which was called console.log. Right? So let's use that function here and say console.log. And now we say hello from head. Again, we add the semicolon. Right? Console.log. You have it? Yes. So let's go to the browser and reload our browser. Nothing happens. Since nothing happens. Good. The reason why nothing happens, it actually happens. Something is happening. But the reason why it seems nothing happens is because we said we are speaking to the console. Remember when we inspected the browser, when we click on right click and we did inspect element, we went to click on console. So we are actually sending this message to the browser's console. And the, the console is like, the console is now the one to talk to the engine for us. You get that? So if you go to the page and you click on your inspect, so you do right click, you do inspect, okay? And now you click on the console again, you will see that message there. <laughs> so when you see me use console.log, I don't want to alert the message because it's quite annoying. Because every time you use alert, the browser will stop there. Until the user react, respond to that alert, the browser will not load the rest of the page. You understand? So that's why alert is quite annoying here. But it's useful to actually see the effect of JavaScript. So when we say console log, we are saying, okay, log this message. It's like, you understand the word log, huh? Log is like a drop. <laughs> drop this message inside the console. And very soon you understand this concept of we using the dot. Okay? So for now, just keep it as something how we use this, how we use it. So console.log, so that we see how it works. So we are sending the, the instruction to the console to be able to log the message for us. And then the console will now talk to the engine inside the browser, and the engine will be like, oh, you just want to display a formal text. So this is your text. <laughs> right? Good. So here we go. Now, since we know we have where we can do our JavaScript, let's see how our JavaScript can interact with HTML. We have learned one fantastic principle or concept in JavaScript already variable. So what I want us to do is to be able to use a variable, then go and do we have a heading tag inside? Yes, we have h1 tag, right? Yeah. So we we'll use a variable and ask JavaScript, go inside that HTML you are in now. Go down there in the HTML. Find the H1 tag we, the, we wrote down. 
find it and put it in a variable in a container so that we can do some manipulation okay find that h1 and we'll see what we can do about it so how do we say javascript go and find something so first of all we know how to declare the variable we say var right and then we we'll give it a name so whatever name we want that can help us so we can say h1 underscore content container so i name my variable h1 underscore container okay and then now we say equals to equals to means okay whatever value is at the right put it inside the variable okay so we call it assignment to assign the value it's not actually the equals to in, 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 in uh, literal mathematics which means uh, this is, is if this is the same as this no this is an assignment operator which means take the value at the right side and put it inside the value uh, the, the left side variable so if you want to know the equivalent of the actual equals to in javascript is written like this so uh, this PC is equals to this PC. In, in human language, it means they are the same. If you want to say in JavaScript they are the same, you use double equal. Okay. But if you use one equal, it means you are taking the value here and you put it in here. You see that? Okay. So that's why you see us using one equal to sign. So we are saying now what value is it going to take? So JavaScript has this function or many functions which help us to find a particular type. Okay? So the first one we are going to discover, which is plain, be careful, this is going to get rough. So we use this, we write this. We ask them to go inside a document, our HTML document. Okay? Go inside our HTML document dot. It's like then, right? Then get element by tag name <laughs> this is, I don't know who created this function in JavaScript the person was taken seriously get element by tag name so we are saying okay go inside the document get an element but we want you to find it by the tag element so we need to provide this function what tag name should it use to find what tag name we are what tag are we trying to find so we give it in brackets okay and we say the tag is going to be called h1 we want you to find an element a tag with the name h1 right so once we are done with that of course javascript will do its work and nothing will happen until we ourselves we decide to display the content of the h1 container the variable if we don't display it nothing will happen right okay. so we are going to say console.log will not alert you see the difference now between alert and console.log yeah. so we'll say console.log and then we are just going to write we will not put it in code this time around we just write the variable inside just like that so we want it to log whatever now it has found and placed inside the h1 container you want to see it if javascript was able to actually go and find that tag right yeah. so if you are done writing let's go to the browser again you load oh get element by tag name is not by is not a function oh really am i that, that bad <laughs> so uh javascript that's one good thing with JavaScript. You see, with CSS, HTML, whenever we make a mistake, nothing ha happens. It keeps quiet. So here it's telling me that the function I'm trying to use is get element by targeting does not exist. So it seems uh, I forgot how the function is. Okay. So the best way is to ask my text editor now to suggest the right writing of the function. So I will get. get element okay let me just google it here and see this is crazy get element by happening oh yes so i see the problem it's not element it's elements 
with S. It's element with S, okay? It's been a while since I used this anyway. Mm. Because there are other uh, functions we use to do the same operation, okay? Mm. But this is it. So now we have a language that actually can give us errors and we can debug quickly. So we do that, we go back to the browser, we will load again. Did you see something? You got something? Let me see. We load, we load the page, let's see. And you are on all. Oh, okay, you are on console, it's all right. Uh, let's go back to the code, let's see how we open that. So we have console.log, yes, via h1 container document dot, not column. So common S. Here we go. You have a, an error, so it says reference error can't find variable H1. Let's see that. Let's see the code again. It's telling that you cannot find the variable H1 where H1. Aha. Uh -huh. It's not you see, you use it without a code, right? The H1 here. So you put code around it, yes, either single or double code. Good. So you can reload. You see? Right. So you see something happens. And there is an arrow in front of it. When you click on that arrow like this, you can see the element H1. So it's telling you that it actually found the H1. And it actually brought it as a collection. So in case you have many H1, it will bring it as a collection of all these H1s. Because we ask him to find every element which has the name of H1. So if you go in our HTML and we add another H1 under the other the first H1, and we say hello inside that one, so I added one H1 under the first one. Right? So we just write hello inside that. Okay. So you, we save, we go to the browser, we reload, we check inside our uh, console again, and we display. We can see the collection comes now with two elements, H1, H1, mm -hmm. right? Good. And it's telling us that the length is two. So the collection has a length of two elements inside it. So this is how one way of JavaScript to go inside and find tabs. So with this element in our hands, we can decide now to add many things to them. We can decide to do many operations on this tag. Since we have them in a variable, so we can do operations on them, and the browser will now take effects. Uh, we'll apply the effect on those tags. So to make that easy for us to see, what I'm going to do is, instead of us to use get elements by tag name here, we are going to use a different type uh, of function. So you have discovered that when we use get elements by tag name, it gets all the tags that we place in the brackets. And before we go, everything we put in code like this is called a string. It's called a string. What JavaScript does is it doesn't try to interpret whatever is inside a, a, a code. It doesn't interpret it. It will just give it to you as you write it. So it's a chain of string. JavaScript doesn't change anything inside. But when you don't use the code and you write a, something here like you did with H1, JavaScript assumes that you have declared a variable and you gave it a name of H1. So anything you use, any name, any word you write like this without putting it inside code, JavaScript assumes it is a, a, a variable. If you put it in code, JavaScript assumes it's your own concern. It doesn't go inside to interpret. It will spit it out exactly as you wrote inside the code. And that's what we call a string. Now, anything you write which has a bracket like this is a function. And we call that, when you use the bracket, we see you did the function call. You call the function. So the difference between a function call and a variable is that a function call has a bracket in front of it. A variable is just the name. You see that? So our variable here, which is h1 container, you see how we used it 
inside log. So log is actually a function. That's why it has a bracket. Okay. The console.log is a function. That's why it has a bracket. The h1 container is a variable. That's why it doesn't have a bracket and it doesn't have code. So if you put code inside, if you put it around code like this, the JavaScript will assume h1 container is just a plain text that he has to speak out just like this. And you can run it and see what you get. You can see h1 container. So instead of interpreting as a variable and find the content inside, it displays that. Right? So you, you, you see a little bit a difference between what JavaScript considers as a string, a raw string, a variable, and then a function name. Okay? Functions usually contain some subroutines, what we call sub-activities. Okay? And then they do that, we don't see how they operate it. So we just call their name and they do these operations. Right? Like uh, if we call a function like math.add and we give it two numbers, it will bring the sum of two and four. But we won't see how it does this operation inside. So the routine of adding the two numbers is defined inside the function, but we don't have to know. So that's why functions are useful. They actually encapsulate a, 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 a process and then bring it into just one name and makes it easy. So how console log goes to log this text, how it happens to bring the text inside, we don't care, we don't know. You see that? So that's one use of functions. You have learned so much in JavaScript in one day that you can't even imagine. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'll give uh, this element here a class. Okay, I'll add attribute class to it. Or let me even use ID. Okay, remember we could use ID or class. So I'll use ID, I'll say title. I'll give it ID of title. So we define that ID as title, it's our choice. Okay, now I'll go back to the JavaScript where we try to fetch that HTML element. Now we are targeting that HTML element that has the ID of title, only that HTML tag. So we are going to do get element by element by ID. If I'm not wrong again. Okay. So this time around it's not by tag name, but it is by ID. And then the ID, we write our ID here, title. So find any element which has the ID of title. So if I'm not mistaken, the, the name of the function which I did, uh, I think it should be get element, not element. Uh, it's telling me no, it shouldn't be no. Uh, where I have to add hash in front? Let me see. Uh, element of get element by ID. ID. ID is ID. I don't know why I'm, I'm forgetting these functions. Okay. And the brother is not even, the editor is not suggesting anything. Get element, get element by ID. What did I write? Get element by ID. Yes. By ID. Yes, that is it. Get element, get element by ID. Get element by ID. Why is it like some way? Top number, get element by ID. Let me see the difference between the two. It's the same function. So it's giving me that it is more. Or uh, let me let me find out what is going on here. Let me use query selector. I 
Aha, okay, 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 okay. A second, let me let me let me confirm what I'm 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 fine, I'm actually realizing right now. Mm -hmm. Good. It works. So this is the problem and it is important to underline that right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really crazy that I fall into this trap. Okay, so this is the problem. We use get element by tag ID uh, by ID. The function is actually correct. I have no problem with that. Thank God. <laughs> so the problem we have is that we are checking. This is very important. When the browser is loading the page, it will start loading the page from the doc type, HTML, head, title, link, then the script language and everything. When it reaches the script, it sees a function that says, find an element that has the ID of title. But unfortunately, the browser has not loaded that element. You get that? The browser has not loaded to that element. So JavaScript assumes it is wrong. It has not found it. So to, to solve this problem, when you are embedding JavaScript inside your HTML, it is more advised that you take all this your embedded JavaScript from the head tag and put it right before the closing body tag here. Right here. So you see, you put the JavaScript here before you close the body tag. That being said, the browser will load all the HTML before your JavaScript starts interacting with that HTML. It doesn't mean you shouldn't put JavaScript in the head, but it depends on the operation. If you know that you are going to operate on the HTML element, make sure you put your JavaScript after, uh, before the closing body tag, so that your JavaScript doesn't miss the HTML tags, try to find it while they are not loaded yet. Okay, mm -hmm. so now if we reload, it will try to find that HTML tag. Oh, that was tough. Mm -hmm. Still have about 20 minutes or so. I don't want to add more. Did you get the same result? So when you reload the page, you will see H1. It mm -hmm. will find that particular H1. You get that? Yeah. So once we find that particular H1, we can decide to do some operations on it here. So I could say, for example, H1 dot, uh, H1 dot star, dot color equals to red. Have you noticed that? Mm. <laughs> so now, once I find, I want to find the HTML tag that has the ID of title, that tag is now inside the container here. And I said, okay, to this container, apply some star, and the star I want to apply is called color, and then I give it the value of red. So this is writing CSS inside JavaScript. Don't mind that yet. But this is to show to you that from JavaScript, I can manipulate HTML elements. You see, I use JavaScript to change the color of an HTML element. That's how we can interact. As time goes now, we will see how we can add, remove new HTML elements, rearrange our page with JavaScript dynamically. It means we could use a, a if statement. For example, we can get the user's IP address and find out if the IP address is an IP address from France, show the background color as blue. And if the IP address, or else the IP address must be from a different country, show black background. So you see, 
Now, we interacting with HTML elements can com be combined with the logic JavaScript has to create more dynamic documents. And I'm done for today. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will leave you now. Now so you can get to breathe more. So all you have to keep in mind now is the, the fact that JavaScript engine, which is the, the, the core thing that knows how to interpret JavaScript, is inside the browser. And JavaScript can be used for logic. And JavaScript can be used to interact with your HTML tags. That's the things you need to keep in mind. And maybe keep in mind that you have console.log and you have alerts. That will be enough. <laughs> that will be enough. The rest and the other thing is accessories, demonstrations. So from tomorrow going, now we need to start reasoning in terms of really, really JavaScript guys. So try to keep this in mind, strictly in mind, like seriously, like the way you know your HTML uh, skeleton, you must know this in mind. It will help you have a kind of map, a guideline, in understanding that JavaScript does this logic and it can interact with the external elements. So our goal is able to be able to interact with this element in many ways as we can to enhance our page. And now, during that, we need to come up with logic because we need to test conditions to find out when we should behave this way or that way. So the logic part of JavaScript can also come in to help us do that. That's the whole thing with JavaScript. Once you understand that, we are good to go. Thank you so much, and may God bless you with much more knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs>